So we're talking about the three different forms of the equation of a line. So we looked at y equals mx plus b. And that was called the slope-intercept form. And then we had y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, and that was the point-slope form. So there's a third form that's called the general form, and it looks like ax plus by equals c, and this form is really useful for graphing, but only if a and b both divide evenly into c. So in this first example, we have that the a is 4, and the b is 3, and the c is 24. So a and b both divide evenly into c. So that means we can use the intercept method for graphing. So if we have our x and y coordinate system, and you think about the y-intercept, that's a point on the y-axis, so that means its x-coordinate is 0. So you set x equals 0 in the equation and solve for the y, and these come out to be really simple, simple algebra problems where we can just see visually that y equals 8. So we know that the y-intercept is 0, 8. Then we want to find the x-intercept, and the x-intercept is on the x-axis. So if you want to find the x-intercept, you set y equal to 0. So you'll have 4x plus 3 times 0 equals 24, and you can see that x is 6. So 6 comma 0 is going to be our x-intercept, and then you draw the line that connects those two points, and there you go. So I have a little just shorthand I use for doing this myself, which you are welcome to adopt. I make a little chart with x and y, and I put a 0 in the first line of the chart for the x, and a 0 for the y in the second line. And then, actually what I do is I say when x is 0, then the first term of the equation is going to be 0. So I cover it up with my finger, really. And then I say I can see that y then is 8. And then I set the y equals 0, and that has the effect of making the second term disappear, and I can see that the x is 6. So you're welcome to adopt this little um, shorthand if you like, and I'll know what you mean. Okay, then the second example, you can see that it's not true that the a and the y divide even the a and the b divide evenly into the c. In fact, neither one. 6 doesn't divide evenly into 16, negative 9 doesn't divide evenly into 16. So for this one, you're going to need to solve for the y to be able to draw the graph. So you would subtract the 6x from both sides and have negative 9y equals negative 6x plus 16, and then you would divide both sides by negative 9 and reduce any fractions to get y equals 2 thirds x minus 16 ninths. So that'd be kind of a pain to graph because it has a very strange y-intercept, but we could figure it out. We could make our boxes on our graph each be 1 ninth. Okay, then our fourth objective is to graph linear inequalities in two variables. So we already started talking about this, and this is in section 2.4, so that's your first homework assignment, is working on graphing linear inequalities. So it starts on page 95 in the textbook, and working with inequalities is very similar to the work you do with equations, with one really, really, really important difference. Remember that if you multiply or divide both sides of an inequality by a negative number, 
the direction of the opening of the inequality reverses. So let's talk about why that happens. So here's zero, and suppose I have the numbers one and three. Well, clearly one is less than three. Because we're on the right-hand side of the number line where numbers are larger than zero, then the farther you are to the right, the larger the number is. But then suppose I multiply both sides of this inequality by negative two. Well, then I'm gonna have negative two on the left-hand side and negative six on the right-hand side. So I'm gonna have negative two and negative six. But now you can see because we're to the left of zero, numbers to the right are larger because they're closer to zero, and so the direction of the inequality has to be reversed in order to write a true statement. So it's not just a rule, it's because this is what happens when you multiply or divide by a negative number, and so you have to keep your statement true by reversing the direction of the opening of the inequality. So we're gonna take a little aside here. There's some important information in section 2.4 that you will need throughout the rest of the class. So this is a really, really important page. I would probably take a highlighter and make a box around the whole page. This is really important stuff. So from section 2.4, we need the concept of break even, and that's where it gets introduced in this textbook. So many problems in business involve analyzing revenue, your money coming in, cost, your money going out, and your profit, the difference. So we use capital R, capital C, and capital P to represent these quantities, and we purposefully use uppercase letters because the lowercase letters get used for other things. So get in the habit of using uppercase. The break-even point is the point where your revenue equals your cost and there's no profit. So you can either write it as revenue equals cost or as profit equals zero. Because if you think about it, your profit equals your revenue, your money coming in, minus your cost. And most businesses take three to even five years to become profitable. And to get to profitable, you go through this break-even point. So it's a really important point to be aware of if you are the one running the business. So refer back to page 15, where it talks about the revenue equation. It says revenue, the money you bring in, is going to be the price per item times the number of items you sell. So suppose you sell tennis shoes that are $50 and you sell 1,000 pairs, then you multiply those together to get $50,000 of revenue. Okay, so this idea comes up a lot in this class where if you want to know the total, you take the per each and multiply by how many. Okay, so that's revenue. Then cost has two components, fixed costs and variable costs. Fixed costs are those costs which don't depend on your production level. Fixed costs would be things like your rent and your utilities and your insurance that it doesn't really matter how many widgets you're making, those costs are fixed. Then your variable costs are the ones that depend on how many you're making. Your materials costs and your labor costs and your transportation costs, those are usually variable costs. So a cost function, we're gonna to learn to write in function notation, usually would look something like 2,500 plus 25 X. So the fixed costs are the parts that don't depend on X. And then the variable costs are gonna be the part that does depend on X, where X is production level. So when I say production level, I mean, I'm making 1,000 pairs of tennis shoes per month, or I'm making 10,000 
jars of salsa each week. So production level is a quick way of saying how many are you making. And we do kind of a simplification in business math where we say we're assuming you sell everything you make. And so production level and sales are the same, knowing that that's not the real world, but it simplifies things so that you can study the concepts. And then in your upper division classes, you can get more complex. Okay, so that was the end of the little aside, super, super important section 2.4 concepts that we'll need going forward. So let's go back to the graphing the linear inequalities and graphing the line and then shading or putting arrows on the true side is what we mean when we say graph a linear inequality. So for this example, it's one of the nice types of equations of a line where the coefficient on x and the coefficient on y both divide evenly into the constant of 4. So I'm going to do my intercept method where I say when x is 0, y is negative 4, and when y is 0, x is 2. So I'm going to label my x and y axes and put my x-intercept of 2, 0, and my y-intercept of 0, negative 4. And I'm having trouble with my drawing tool, so let me see if I can shift to another drawing tool. Somehow it's getting mouse action going on when I didn't mean to do anything with the mouse. So let's see if we can get this under control. So I want a freehand. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pause here and figure out this OneNote issue, and then I'll need to make one more video to be able to get to the end of this section. Okay, I think I was able to figure out how to get back to my drawing tool. So here is my y-intercept, 0, negative 4, and my x-intercept of 2, 0. And then I take my ruler, and I line it up on my two points, draw my line, and then if the inequality is a, what's called the strict inequality, we make a dashed line to indicate that. In this case, we have the or equals two, so we make a solid line. So just make sure you're paying attention to that, that if the equals is included, the line is solid. If the equals is not included, then the line needs to be dashed. So then we need to figure out where to shade. So let's use the test zero zero method. So I put in 2 times 0 minus 0, and I want to know if that's less than or equal to 4. Well, it looks to me like 0 is less than or equal to 4. So show me some evidence of your thinking. Okay, that's true. So I need to indicate the side of the line where 0, 0 is. So this is what we mean by graphing a linear inequality. Okay, so here's another example. This one, the 4 does not divide evenly into the 9. So we're going to need to solve for the y and use a different strategy for the graphing. 
So I'm going to have negative 3y is greater than negative 4x plus 9. And then I'm going to divide both sides by negative 3. So the inequality is going to reverse. So I'll have y is less than 4 thirds x minus 3. So I'm going to use the slope intercept method for graphing, where my y intercept is negative 3. Label my axes. And then my slope is 4 thirds. So I go up 4 over 3 to make another dot on the line. Up 4 over 3. And I put as many points as I can fit on the grid so that I can make a nice straight line. And then notice that this is a strict inequality, so the line needs to be dashed. And then because we have it in this form with the y by itself on one side, we can see that we want values of y that are below the line because we have y values that are less than the ones on the line. So you can put your arrows indicating I want the region below the line as my graph. So make sure you use good graphing technique. And let's go on to objective five in one more video.